A lot of people thought the iPad Mini 6 was the star of the show at last Tuesday's Apple event, and while I personally disagree for selfish reasons and my obsession of 120 hertz, I do agree it was probably one of the most exciting and lasting impact announcements that they made, and I just personally love what it says for the iPad lineup as a whole, and I'm very thankful that Apple has released the Mini 6. I can't wait to try it out myself, but today we're talking iPad lineup, how it was fixed and shattered simultaneously. Let's begin. So the main reason I'm super duper pumped about the iPad Mini 6 is it shows that Apple was comfortable making USB-C basically the standard for the majority of the iPad lineup. Before the iPad Mini 6 came out, it was kind of half and half. You had Type-C and Thunderbolt even on the Pros, and then the Air is just starting to get USB-C, but the Air really kind of felt just like a dumbed-down iPad Pro. But the Mini was the first time it wasn't just a dumbed-down iPad Pro. This was a new form factor for the squared-off iPad without a headphone jack and with USB-C without a home button. Now they're bringing the Type-C connectivity in this updated, you know, magnetic design of the iPad accessories into a more affordable category at $499. This does not make it a pro product by any means, but it shows that at least the iPad hardware team sees a future in Type-C connectivity, and basically, I'm willing to applaud Apple anytime they switch any product, I don't care what it is, from Lightning to Type-C, and the iPad mini was absolutely deserving of that. The other thing I'm really happy for when it comes to unification of the lineup is the death of white bezels. I missed it at first and didn't realize it until we were recording the tech podcast, but even the budget iPad, the silver and space gray colors, both have black bezels regardless. So before all of you were running off on your hype train about how, oh, Apple's gonna do white bezels for entry-level products and black bezels for pro products. Yeah, it doesn't sound like it, because they killed off the white bezels of the budget iPad and the iPad mini, which means only black bezels across the entire iPad hardware line, which I'm a huge fan of. And something else Apple was able to make abundantly clear with the new iPads we got a couple days ago was center stage is not a pro feature, which I couldn't be more happy about because it's very rare that we get a new feature on an iPad Pro that's so fun and so useful, and then simultaneously Apple just suddenly adds it to the cheapest iPad in the entire lineup. Honestly, this came completely out of left field for me. I thought center stage was going to remain as a premium, you know, pro feature, but Apple has seen so much positive positive feedback with it, they've decided to even bring it to a $300 iPad, and yes, of course, it's brought to the iPad Mini 6 as well, which means the entire iPad lineup now has that really cool ultra-wide view for center stage features, but the iPad Air Four, which brings me to my next segment of this video, which is how Apple basically destroyed the iPad Air 4 in terms of value. I mean, yes, you can still buy one. I guess the main reason you'd still consider getting one, honestly, is because you really, really want that 10.9 inch display. You really want a physical, you know, $300 keyboard to buy with your $600 iPad. And if that combo is absolutely necessary for you, then I guess you still gotta go with the iPad Air, but it's just so abundantly out of place now. I mean, the iPad Mini 6, not only did it borrow a lot of iPad Air features, it gained a ton of features that the Air still doesn't have. For one, of course, center stage. But now the iPad Mini 6 has the A15 chip, which has a drastically improved GPU. It's got the four gigs of RAM that the iPad Air has, but improved CPU performance as well. So you're getting better overall performance with a cheaper 499 iPad, and simultaneously you're getting 5G support for cellular, not that that matters, but there's a lot of people that might be trying to buy the iPad mini to treat it as an iPhone Pro Max Plus. So if you wanted cellular on your iPad, the mini got 5G access and the Air did not. They even gave the flash to the back of the iPad mini camera and iPad Air still at this point does not have flash. And then of course they match the storage options with the iPad mini as well. So you can still choose between 64 or 256 gigs on a cheaper iPad as a whole. So in my opinion, like like, if you're looking to buy an iPad and you absolutely need a keyboard case, like you have to use it with the physical keyboard and everything, I would much rather use the 12.9 inch iPads at that point because you get a full-size keyboard case, whereas if you buy an iPad Air, you're getting kind of a crunched down mini keyboard case, which I've tried in the past and I wasn't too happy with, and iPadOS as a whole, I've seen at least a lot of people be very disappointed with it, the fact that they still can't figure out the file management system very good, they can't give it pro applications, and that's because I iPad OS is limited by, I think, Apple's core vision of what it should be, which is touch-dominant
it, and it's really not supposed to be anything more than that. It's just iOS on a bigger screen, and they just gotta tinker it a little bit to allow for split-screen multitasking, and voila, it's a whole separate platform somehow. And I have no problem with iPads that are being used for the basics, social media, watching YouTube, checking email, and okay, now you got the Apple Pencil 2 support on the Mini, so you can do your fun drawings and you don't have to charge it that stupid way the Apple Pencil 1 still needs to be charged. But iPad OS still, fundamentally, I think, has been optimized for a touch interface. You know, I ditched my Magic Keyboard case a few months ago, and I haven't really missed it very much. I'm still using my iPad for the basics. I make video thumbnails with it, I browse Twitter and use Discord with it, and I check my email from it, and it's a great device. It just can't really do a lot of the productivity things my Mac can. And I think that seeing how Apple has treated iPad OS this year should be evident to people that this is how Apple sees iPads behaving. They don't really see them being that good at replacing productivity tasks that we still need laptops for. Even if you get a keyboard case and it has a trackpad and you end up spending, you know, $900 on your iPad Air and its accessories, I think you're still fundamentally going to be doing the same things you could have done on an iPad mini. Now, which has a better GPU, better CPU, better camera, better connectivity, and a lot of the same benefits. You still get the great stereo speakers and landscape. You can still use the Apple Pencil 2. You can still charge it with USB-C. There's so many reasons now, in my opinion, to go with the iPad Mini 6 that justifying the iPad Air 4 has just become way harder to do. Like, if you're going to be dropping that kind of money on an iPad, I'm just going to tell you to go with an iPad Pro or really question yourself to see if you can't live with an 8.3 inch iPad because that's the biggest display the iPad Mini's ever had and it's going to fit very comfortably in one hand but still do all of the things an iPad is capable of. So I love seeing this more uniform design language between all of the different iPads with the exception of the budget iPad, which honestly, I feel like it kind of always has to be that dated. You know, if they made some kind of iPad that looked like the iPad Air but was now $300, then who would want to buy an iPad Air at that point? I can't think of that many differences they can take between having two 10-inch iPads, one that's $300 and one that's $600, other than, I guess, you know, non-lamination, lightning, home button. So maybe if the iPad Air 5 gets an OLED display next year and maybe some camera improvements, they'll decide that's different enough, but I think the sales of a $300 iPad without a home button and with USB-C and everything would just go through the roof. So we're probably going to be looking at a fairly dated old-fashioned iPad as the SE, if you will, for the $300 price point for many, many years to come. But I'm very happy with the lineup as it stands right now. Of course, iPad Air is going to need some kind of refreshing next year. But honestly, I think it's a good opportunity for everyone to hop on board the iPad Mini 6 train because this is probably the best value iPad you can get right now. Let me know if you guys are planning on picking one up next week and what you're most excited for with the Mini 6. This is your Apple Sheep here. I'll see you guys in the next one.